All right, joining me now is the CEO of Titan FC. Please welcome Jeff Aronson to the program. Jeff, how's it going? I'm doing good, Nick. How are you, buddy? I'm, Thank I'm, you for, uh, for putting me on. Of course, I really appreciate you taking time. I'm doing well as well. Thanks for asking. Um, so the first question I have for you is, um, Titan FC has really grown a lot in the past year and a half or so. Um, are you happy with the growth and the progress of Titan FC basically ever since you guys uh, sealed down the Fight Pass deal last year? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it was actually before the Fight Pass deal, to be honest with you. I think... Um you know, when I bought Titan FC in, in late 2013, early 2014, um, they were they were virtually, um, you know, it, it was a promotion that was fledgling along. They, they had lost their deal on Access TV. Um, I immediately went out, got a deal uh, for Titan on CBS Sports Network, um, we garnered a massive amount of attention for that deal. Then um, the UFC Fight Pass deal came along. If you remember, um, I believe we were the second promotion on UFC Fight Pass right after Invicta. Um, and that garnered a tremendous amount of attention. And actually, uh, incredibly recently, we were just voted the number one promotion um, on UFC Fight Pass. So that was a tremendous honor. And, and um Am I happy? Yeah, I, I mean, I'm happy, but, but you know, I'm, I'm always in competition with myself. There are things I want to do better with the promotion. There are things that we're striving for. A lot of deals going on that, that uh, the public will be aware of shortly. And um, we're, we're, we're just plugging along, you know, every day plugging along. It doesn't sound like you you can reveal some of the upcoming things, but what what are a few things you're, you're hoping to do um, to to uh, to to make Titan FC grow just as an organization overall, even more than it already has? I think international television deals are on the horizon. I think uh, domestic television deals are on the horizon. I think that um, uh, Titan as an organization has gotten stronger, bigger, fan base has, has gotten more immense. When you talk about the top few promotions in the world, Titan is in that conversation. And just very happy with the way that um, our idea was on, on how to build a promotion has come to fruition and that we're, we're now considered within the, the top five promotions, certainly worldwide, you know, and, and it's, right. it's nice to be there. Um, if you do lock down a TV deal, whenever that may be, whether that's in uh, six months or a year or two years, whatever whatever the time frame is on that, um, would you stay with Fight Pass as well, or would it strictly be on TV going forward? No, I, I would I would stick with Fight Pass and do a uh, a dual partnership and and have Fight Pass run in parallel with uh, with the TV deals. A any specific reasoning for that? Oh, I, the platform is just tremendous. 150 plus companies, uh, countries. Um, you know the support from UFC, the UFC PR machine, um, PR machine. The fact that we've had so many fighters go directly into UFC is just amazing. Um, you know, you just look at it overall, and it's just been a tremendous relationship back and forth. So we we couldn't be happier. Um. Can you talk about the recent decision to basically move the home base of Titan FC down to South Florida? Um, it, it seems like it's definitely a good move for you. There's a lot of talent down there in South Florida with American Top Team, te American Top Team, and the Black Zillions, of course. Uh, just talk about that decision to move uh, home base down to South Florida. Yeah, I mean, you have you have American Top Team, you have Black Zillions, you have the MMA Masters, you have Freestyle Fighting Academy, you have Helsing Gracie, you have, you know, there, there's so many gyms, um, one after another, that we're literally in a true hotbed, a mecca of MMA. So why I would not continue and, and move the company here full time um, would, would just not make sense. So So for us, it was a tremendous opportunity that we had been talking about for a while, and and uh, we're really coming to our own and and building, um, 
you know, we've always had an incredible product on a worldwide basis. We always get incredible viewership on a worldwide basis. And this was the opportunity to add that Miami flair to it, you know, weigh-ins on mega yachts, um, you know, celebrities in, in the stands, uh, UFC fighters, football players, uh, musicians, entertainers, you name it. So, so for us, it's just the drawing power, and, and, and Miami is our home. So it was a perfect, uh, it was a perfect storm. Um, is there any plan in the foreseeable future to uh, do other shows outside of South Florida, or is uh, Florida going to be the location for all of your upcoming shows um, in the foreseeable future? I think that there will be smaller shows that we'll do, a couple of smaller shows a year um, that will not be – uh, in Florida, but on on a regular basis, kind of like a Challenger series, like Strike Force used to do. Okay. But on a on a regular basis, um, South Florida will be the home. Uh, Miami will be the home. Fort Lauderdale will be the home. And a couple times a year, we'll venture out around the country into other hotbeds and bring the top talent from around the country into South Florida. Okay, awesome. Now, um, let's talk about your current commentary team of Titan FC. You have Black Zillions uh, fighter and current UFC Waltweight uh, fighter, Dolph fighter, 21 winner, Ka Kamaru Usman, and you also have Showdown Joe. They're, they're your main guys right now. Uh, talk about um, how, how you got both guys involved with, with you, your guys' commentary, and just talk about their work and, and, and how much you enjoy it right now. Um, do, are, are you happy with them as your current uh, commentators? Yeah, no, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled with the, uh, the, the synergy between the two guys right now, and it's, it's been something that we've been playing with for, for a while. Um, you know, Showdown Joe is, has been an icon in, in MMA sports in, in, uh, in Canada for years, and, and Showdown Joe brings a tremendous audience with him. He has an unbelievable work ethic, and the guy is literally an encyclopedia of the sport. So I love having Joe down there because there are things that he and I talk about on such a deep level of understanding that it's just great. And then you bring in someone like, like Kamal, who, like you said, was the ultimate fighter winner, um, surging prospect in the UFC, incredibly articulate, bright guy, really breaks it down from a fighter's point of view. And I just love the way they bounce off each other. So it's a great um, partnership, and we, we love them both. Now, I talked to uh, Kamaru Usman uh, about a month ago or so and, and focused on, on his job at Titan FC as, as, your, as your commentator. Um, he wasn't sure if this is going to be a full-time gig or, or not. It's still a card-by-card a, a, a -card basis. From what you believe in and from what you've seen, will they be your full-time commentators going forward? Yeah, I mean, um, Usman will definitely be in the booth. Um, Joe will definitely be in the booth. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's an issue of, you know, what synergistic relationship makes the most sense. And those two guys really sound great in the booth together. So, you know, it's taken a couple shows, and I think they're really hitting their stride. And uh, th those are my guys. Okay, awesome. Now, let's get into uh, this card coming up, Titan FC 41. It, it's a really cool card. Uh, Karina Dam taking on Kalindra Feria is the main event for the vacant women's bandweight championship. Talk about that fight uh, being being the main event over Andre Harrison's featherweight title defense. Well, I mean, if you look at it, this is the first time that Titan has had a women's title fight in the history of the organization. Um, Karina Dam and Kalindra um, Faria hate each other. You know, I mean, for lack of a better word, they hate each other. They're two top-level uh, fighters. Um, Kalindra, I believe, is number nine in the world right now at uh, 125. She stepped up to 135. Um, and I think that this is a fight that deserves a main event slot. So we're we're putting them in that slot. And, and like you said, we have Andre against Povo and, and, you know, you have a guy that's, I think Andre's now 13-0 and 0 and Povo's like 19-4, and 4 and it's just an incredible fight. So, you know, it, it could have gone either way, but I, I felt that 
given given the situation and given the light that, that women's MMA is in and, and how bright the stars are shining, that that should be the main event of the night. Plus, those two girls, this is the trilogy fight, right? You know, um, you know, Karina won the first one. Kalindra won the second one. This is the follow-up. So it'll be really interesting to see what happens. Um, Andre Harrison is a longtime champion of Titan FC. Was he completely okay with uh, being under this uh, women's bandway title fight? Andre is great. He Andre just wants to fight. He's one of those true fighters that wants to fight. So Andre begs me all the time, and, and trust me, he doesn't have to beg too hard, to find him the toughest competition out there that I can find. And I do. I put Andre against killers, and he's beaten them one by one. I mean, look at the list of guys he's he's beaten. He's beat Desmond Green, who is, you know, Desmond Green is just one of the most talented kids I've ever seen. I don't think he ever lived up to his potential at 145, but at 155, Desmond Green, you know, is, is just incredible. Um, he beat Kurt Hollibo. He beat, you know, Cody Bollinger. He beat Steven Seiler. I mean, he, he's just been knocking them off. He, you know, he... he he beat um, uh, Dragon in his last fight. He's been beating everybody that I've been able to put up against him, looking for the best guys. And he's won every time. He doesn't care if he's first fight on the card or last fight on the card. He wants the toughest competition. Now, you recently revealed that you were looking to book uh, Andre Harrison, actually, against Freddie Asunso, the lightweight champion. When did you get that idea to uh, potentially book a super fight? The second I saw, um, uh, the second I saw uh, him win his title, I said that that's the fight to make because he's a natural 145er. So it made all the sense in the world. And and uh, Freddie, he was dying for that fight. So I'm thrilled to make it if it's even possible because I really think the winner of uh, Popo against Harrison is going to go to the UFC. And just quickly clarify why that uh, fight wasn't made. I, I, I believe you maybe uh, said, uh, gave the reason with James Lynch. I, ju I just can't recall. Is Asenso injured? Yeah, he, um, he he broke a couple small bones in his okay. hand in, in the uh, fight against Jay-Z, but he'll be ready to go, I believe, um, for the next card. Okay. Um, are you? Are do you, is the plan to to just have him defend the lightweight belt, or or does it look like um, if Harrison gets past uh, Alexandra Bezerra, does it look like that that uh, a fight that could be uh, matched up? If Harrison gets uh, gets past this fight, um, we're going to do a super fight. We're going to make that happen. Andre Harrison has always been clamoring for a UFC shot, though. Um, are, are are you? Uh, in hindsight, if he ever, if he does get the call um, with the win, are, are going to be – although there's nothing you can do at the end of the day, Asunso is injured, but uh, would it be a little disappointing that you never did get the chance to do that super fight, or would you be 100% happy uh, for Harrison? No. I mean, listen, I, there, there are so many fights to make. There are so many guys in the divisions. There, there are so – you know, the talent pool is so rich. I, I wish Andre Harrison everything that, that he wants. And, and uh, if he gets that call up, you know, like kudos to him. I'm thrilled for him. So, no, I wouldn't be disappointed. But if I can make it, I'd like to make that fight because I think it's a history-making fight. I think it's an incredible fight. You have, you know, um, Freddie is on sale 9-1, I believe on an 8 or a 9, or 10-1, and one, sorry. 10 and one on a nine fight win streak. Andre Harrison, 13 and zero. At that point, he'd be 14 and zero. Um, that's an incredible fight from two guys that you couldn't get further apart stylistically. And um, I'd love to see it happen. Um, why don't you think Andre Harrison has been signed to the UFC um, yet? Because I think it's long overdue, and, and Titan has been known to uh, to to. Uh, it's, uh, it, UFC has always been known to sign a lot of Titan fighters. We've seen that with Bilal Muhammad, uh, a few others as of late. Why don't you think Andre has been that guy yet? I think Andre is a victim of of his, of his success, truthfully. I think he's so incredibly talented with his wrestling that he doesn't he doesn't let it flow as much as he should from transition 
to transition, meaning his striking into his wrestling and his wrestling into his striking. And I think he finds a way to win every time, depending on the wrestling, but he may not finish. And I think from the UFC's perspective, and I'm just guessing, um, that they want to see some finishes out of him. So, you know, I think that's probably in Andre's mind. And like you said, you know, much lesser fighters with lesser fights on Titan um, without the accolades that Andre Harrison has have been signed to UFC, you know, tenfold. So I think Andre has to finish. I think that's the bottom line. He's got to prove he can finish and that he's excited. And do you think he knows that? Do you think going into this matchup, he knows that if he wants to get the call to the UFC, he needs to go out, out there and either submit his opponent or, or or get the knockout, of course. Do you think he knows that? I, I, yeah, I mean, Andre's a smart kid. I'm, I'm sure he realizes that he's 13-0, and 0, and his counterparts on the cards are, are getting the calls up left and right. He's the Titan champion, and um, I think I, I think the... UFC can only evade calling him up for so long, whether he finishes or he doesn't, but um, it'll certainly speed up the process if he finishes, that's for sure. Now, uh, Andre Whitney and Farquhar Cherpop was supposed to uh, they, they were supposed to fight in the Titan FC 41 co-main event, and Whitney, you, you recently pulled Whitney from this card um, uh, after, of course, unfortunate circumstances. Um, you, you did an interview kind of going in, in uh, a bit in depth about this situation and, and, and Whitney's words. Um, in, in an interview he actually did with me, and then that article on, on Bloody Elbow that I actually wrote, um, were you surprised? When you saw this article, um, because you said in that interview you did you did that Whitney has been known to um, say perhaps not the most smart things. Uh, were you surprised when you saw this? Um, you know, I, I it was more an issue of I had just heard that you know I was first of all I was aggravated about the situation. I was aggravated that the fight was not going to go on. Um, to be honest with you. Whitney has two broken um, bones in his hand, and he can't fight. <laughs> Even if I wanted him to, he can't fight. And I had gotten the call literally 10 minutes before that interview. Sharapov is hurt, too, so he can't fight. And it all happened literally between a 20-minute span. So when they caught me on that interview, I was certainly, you know, angry and annoyed. Um, listen, you know, did Andrew choose his words? Right? No. Um is Andrew a good kid? Yeah, he's a good kid. Did did he have a, a poor choice of words? Yeah, but you know what? Fighters want to fight, and fighters want to fight on the biggest platforms they can. And, and, you know, am I mad at Andrew? No. You know, would I have wished he chose his words better? Sure. But I think it was more a victim of, of the situation than anything else. So if uh, both guys were not injured, this is kind of funny because I, I didn't know both guys were injured. If both guys were not injured, uh, would this fight go on? Yes. So just I, I, I was going to ask you, but it seems like it's safe to say Andrew Whitney is still a Titan FC fighter at this time. Titan, yeah, Andrew Whitney is absolutely a Titan FC fighter. You know, myself like everybody else, you know, we speak out of emotion. We, you know... As, as a CEO, a promoter, and, and everything else, it doesn't mean I don't, I don't get affected by a situation. The, the effectuation wasn't the article. The effectuation was hearing about broken hands, broken bones in the hand 10 minutes before a fight, you know, so before an interview. So, listen, um, I think Andrew really, like I said, I think he really chose his words wrong. I think Titan has done tremendous things for Andrew. I think Andrew is a great, you know, prospect. But, listen, truth is, had his hand been okay, I would have put him in the fight. Have you talked to Andrew since the article was published? I have spoken to Andrew's manager numerous times. Um, Lex has spoken to Andrew. And, um, you know, as far as dealing day-to-day -day on that type of situation, I wouldn't deal with it anyway. So it has nothing to do with Andrew. But, uh, yes, the, the company has been in contact with Andrew and his manager.
Okay. Um, Andrew and Farkad, are, are they going to still fight for the Bantamweight title? Um, depending on how long these injuries last, I, I don't know how severe they are. Um, de depending on how, how long they uh, last in recovery time and things like that, are, are, are they still going to be the, the, the guys fighting for the vacant Bantamweight title? From what I understand, Andrew's hand is a little worse than, than um, Farkad's injuries. So my guess is that Brett Johns, is going to step in and fight for um, the title against Barkov. Brett Johns being, I think, the number two or three prospect in the world at Bantamweight. Um, and the winner of that fight will fight Andrew Whitney and leave Andrew enough time to heal himself correctly. Okay, very awesome. Well, Jeff, I really appreciate you taking time today. Uh, before I let you go, just let my audience know where they can find you on social media, where they can find Titan FC on social media. Uh, give all the details for Titan FC 41 in September, and anything else you got to plug, now's your time. Absolutely. Um, uh, as always, Jay Aronson, that's J-A-R-O-N-S-O-N, Titan FC on Twitter, at Titan Fighting on Twitter. Um, you know, come, look, we engage with the fans on a constant basis, giveaways, fun, you know, interaction. Uh, also, September 9th, Bank United Center, Florida. going to be an incredible card, and um, I encourage everybody to get out there and have some fun.